Okay, hi there, and welcome to another chance to look at a synoptic essay plan. We take a topic, in this case subsidies for farmers, and think about how to structure a really good 25 mark answer for the Excel paper. Here's the question coming up. Evaluate the micro and macroeconomic effects of the UK government ending subsidies for farmers. I suppose the context here is that when the UK leaves the European Union, more than likely leaving the single market and the customs union, then the system of farm subsidies may well change in the years to come. And this is a classic question, if you like, a debate between the free market versus the interventionist schools in economics about what might be the possible impact of taking away subsidies for farmers. 25 mark questions, and we're looking, in my experience, to build three points. At least one has to be micro, at least one macro. Evaluate each of the points and then come to a final reasoned conclusion. Along the way, we practice what we call chains of reasoning. This is how good answers are structured. You, you build a chain of thought for each of your main points and then leave a couple of lines and then start to evaluate. So my first point is a micro argument. If the UK government ended subsidies, starting by going back to the question, this might lead to a fall in revenue and profit and cause some farmers to leave the industry. It's a kind of generic point, I suppose. Then I define a subsidy. A subsidy is a financial payment to farmers, either as a direct payment or a subsidy per unit of production. Of course, the CAP has moved away from production subsidies towards single farm income payments. But other way, a subsidy is, is financial support for farmers. If the subsidy ended, then as my analysis diagram shows, I'm flagging up a diagram I'm going to be using in the essay, producer prices would likely revert back to a lower level. And a fall in prices and output would then cause a fall in total revenue. Assuming that costs remain the same, this would reduce industry profits in the farm sector. If farmers are making subnormal profits, a good term to use, and there would be economic losses, then they opt, they may opt to leave the industry, which will cause a fall in supply. Therefore, eliminating subsidies, getting rid of farm support payments, could cause a recession in the farm sector, which might lead to fewer jobs and also a, a drop in median farm incomes. There's my micro point. My analysis diagram. I was thinking about whether to use cost and revenue curves in this answer or whether to stick to simple supply and demand. In the end, I've gone with the supply and demand approach. I think it's fine on a synoptic paper. The market supply before the subsidy is now uh, is, is, is higher than the market supply post-subsidy. In other words, if you, if you provide a subsidy, then the supply curve shifts to the right. The consumer pays uh, the price P2. Of course, the farmer gets the, the market price P2 plus the subsidy payment, so they get P3. If we take away the subsidy, if we eliminate the subsidy, then the market price goes back to the original equilibrium of P1, and the output contracts from Q2 to Q1. So my argument is that cutting the subsidy would, help, would hurt farm revenue and profit. However, and there's a chunky evaluation paragraph here, I'd like to build a good evaluation point, Farmers might respond to the ending of subsidies by attempting to increase productivity, which might cause a fall in their unit costs. For example, farmers might decide to, to put more money into more efficient capital machinery and building, which automates the growing process and allows them to grow more throughout the year. Probably larger scale farmers better able to absorb and afford this, whereas smaller farmers might have to respond by improving the quality of their produce, perhaps branding their own output, to enable them to get a better price and remain commercially viable. Then I throw in a bit of knowledge. I know that in the mid-1980s, subsidies in New Zealand were scrapped about 30, 35 years ago. And whilst initially this caused some heavy job losses and a big drop in farm uh, land prices, the, the actual the free market approach eventually led to the New Zealand farm sector becoming a lot more efficient, productively efficient, and also diversified used a wider range of products. Indeed, the cheaper land, if you take away subsidy, you can make the slightly counterintuitive point that land prices fall, and that makes it more affordable for new farmers to come into the sector. New Zealand, of course, has now developed significant global comparative advantage in food. It's a major food exporter 
to other countries despite the distances involved. A second micro effect of eliminating subsidies, by the way, means start in your answer, signpost to the examiner. My second point is microeconomics, is that eliminating subsidies could be causing higher food prices for consumers and a fall in welfare. Then my chain of reasoning, subsidy is likely to cause an inward shift of market supply that's going to make food more expensive in the shops. For many families, food bills are the biggest category of spending and if food's more expensive, that's going to cut their, their real disposable income effectively. An increase in food prices acts like a tax and it will also cause, chain of reasoning, a loss of consumer surplus as shown in my analysis diagram. As shown in my analysis diagram, it's just a way of flagging up to the examiner that there's an analysis diagram on the way. Consumer surplus falls, I'll show you that in a second. The wealth losses from subsidy free farming might be felt most by low income families. So this could be this could have a, a regressive effect. And there's a risk that higher food prices might therefore lead to an increase in food poverty and perhaps an increase in undernourishment if families can't afford those higher prices. There's my analysis diagram showing supply with no subsidies, supply with the subsidies. So in a world of no subsidy, the market price will be P2 and consumer surplus as a result uh, will fall. It's the area underneath the demand curve and above the market price. Initially, consumer surplus was, was area A, P1, C. It's now, other things being the same, it's now A, P2B. Evaluation point. We go back to one of our favourite evaluation phrases this year. Although in theory ending subsidies might lead to increased prices for consumers, although in theory it should happen, in practice, in reality if you like, the impact might be less significant. Uh, and then I bring in a little bit of macro here. First, the outside of the EU the UK might be able to negotiate a free trade deal with, with countries who have a comparative advantage in food production outside the EU. This means that we'll be able to import food more cheaply than when we're inside the customs union. Trade liberalisation can have a direct beneficial effect on the prices that we pay for food in the supermarkets. And secondly, higher prices, really the same point within the evaluation here, secondly, higher prices along with behavioural nudges, such as eliminating best before dates, on foods, these higher prices might actually be an incentive for people to make a, a bigger effort to cut food waste, which actually might be the better way, if you like, of, of keeping the weekly food, food bill under control. A little bit of behavioural economics brought into the answer there. Now, of course, it's synoptic, so I need to make a macro point in the answer. At least one of the points has to be micro, and at least one of the points has to be macro. A macro effect of cutting subsidies is that the government would save nearly three billion pounds a year in spending, leading to a lower fiscal deficit. Ending subsidies will will cut the gap between the government spends and how much tax revenue it takes in. A lower fiscal deficit will help the government control the size of the national debt and perhaps release funds for other projects. So, for example, a fall in farm subsidies might release funds for improving telecommunications or road networks in rural areas, high-speed broadband, for example. And if UK farming becomes more efficient in the long run and makes better profits in the long run, the government will get more tax revenue going forward. Free market economists, of course, argue that subsidies tend to distort markets and ultimately make a country less competitive in the long run. Valuation point. Uh, what I try to bring into this section is a little sense of context. Oftentimes you're given a figure, so for example three billion pounds worth of farm subsidy in the UK last year. That sounds a big number but actually if you put it in context it doesn't always look that way if you frame it in a particular way. Although this argument seems plausible it needs to be put into context. That's a lovely evaluative phrase, a really good evaluative phrase to use. Firstly, farm subsidies were 2.3 billion, but this contrasts with an annual deficit of 43 billion. So it'll cut the deficit, but, but not much, really. And the accumulated national debt is 1.8 trillion. So this is a drop in the ocean. Ending farm subsidies on their own will make little difference to the state of government finances. And indeed, if there's a recession in farming, then the deficit might go up because 
people in farming and rural areas are paying less in corporation tax, national insurance, VAT and stamp duty, etc. And I, I sort of developed the point that if you, if you trigger a recession in farming, that might have a negative multiplier effect, particularly in parts of the country where farming does still remain a big part of the local, the regional economy. Almost there, we've made three points. We've analysed and we have evaluated three points. We just need to put in a final reason comment. Highly recommended, particularly if you have time. If you're rushing at the end, well, there's a bit of a trade-off to be made. Uh, here's my final reason comment. Although farming in the UK actually contributes less than 1% of our GDP, uh, a major reform of getting rid of subsidies would have potentially big macro effects. Um, the UK produces just under half of the food that we consume, so we are quite dependent on food imports. The ending of subsidies would, in the short term at least, increase the demand for food imports, which would worsen our current account deficit. Farming would also be under pressure to increase efficiency, and this might cost some jobs, perhaps some structural unemployment. But um, if subsidies go, necessity is often the mother of invention. So if we move to a subsidy-free farm sector, perhaps UK farmers would be more successful in diversifying production in perhaps a more sustainable way. So in other words, there might be a shift towards high-yielding crops, more marketable crops, for example, uh, and perhaps using um, techniques which are more environmentally sustainable, less reliant on fertilisers and what have you, more water-sensitive, and that would be certainly one of the aims of ending production subsidies. Well, farming is a sector which is actually relatively small in terms of GDP. But for many, many years, it's been a sector with quite significant farm subsidies. This question is just looked at what are some of the possible consequences of eliminating subsidies. And hopefully you can see some of the ways you could structure uh, an answer to this question.